Thank you, Chairman. It's always great to follow my friend and colleague, Garrett Graves, the only gentleman in Congress who can deliver an hour and a half PowerPoint in 20 minutes. His, his points regarding the failed science of the intent, the alleged intent behind the executive orders that we're discussing in part today is exactly on target. Our, our offices have worked together to prepare packets of scientific data that's available to each of you. Um, you can contact my office at clayhiggins.house.gov and we will send you digital copies of whatever you need to deliver this message back to your constituents and to advance the uh, the cause of reason. Chairmen, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Louisiana Senate and House Natural Resources Committee, thank you for inviting me to testify before you today. I'm here on behalf of the thousands of families in Louisiana whose livelihoods are dependent on the oil and gas industry. I don't need to stress to any of you the importance of the oil and gas industry in Louisiana. The industry accounts for over 70 billion of our state's GDP and supports nearly a quarter of a million Louisiana jobs. That means the oil and gas industry supports one in nine jobs in our states. These are good jobs that provide Louisiana families with economic stability and security, jobs that provide a service that keeps our nation running and our homes heated and cooled. It's no secret in Louisiana that the industry has been plagued for some time now by state-based regulations. These old rules and frame of thought and taxes have resulted in the exodus of jobs and businesses across our state into our neighboring states like Texas. Failure to address these self-imposed shortfalls will continue to result in Louisiana's best and brightest citizens leaving our state for good, perhaps, to find opportunity elsewhere. We must stand together as your congressional delegation and our colleagues on both sides of the aisle serving here in our state's capital we, we must work with our executive administrations in Baton Rouge and in D.C. together as Americans first and Louisiana citizens to address the realities of the challenges that we face, some of which are created of our own design. We must stand together and share our minds and hearts and focus our energies on how to overcome some of the unnecessary challenges that we have burdened our own citizens with here in Louisiana and across the country. While the state legislature has been supportive of initiatives to alleviate some of these burdens and to address our state's somewhat toxic legal environment, I believe more needs to be done. As of today, our governor has been rather unwilling to address these issues head on. Further, the constitutionally questionable, I say that kindly, statewide COVID restrictions and the lingering consequences of last year's price war with Saudi Arabia and Russia have put added pressures on the oil and gas industry that are uniquely felt here in Louisiana. The COVID-19 virus didn't destroy our economy and severely wound the oil and gas industry on its own. Oppression of freedoms and an unwillingness to modernize our state's laws has impacted just as much as the virus itself and injured the citizens we're sworn to serve. While these state issues are known, we're also currently faced with an onslaught of unknown federal regulations. It's going to get worse. While the Trump administration did a fantastic job of overturning onerous and misguided regulations, unnecessary, injurious, sometimes targeted against 
the oil and gas industry. We're now faced with President Biden's administration, who has quite an alternate opinion of the oil and gas industry. Upon taking office last month, the Biden administration wasted no time launching a full-scale assault on oil and gas. Through executive decree, President Biden is pushing job-killing energy policies that will send production overseas and further injure America's economy. Sadly, this is just the beginning. In the first two weeks, we've seen the administration revoke permits for the Keystone XL pipeline, enact drilling moratorium for federal lands and waters, rejoin the misguided Paris ag Agreement, and begin implementing Green New Deal standards. These executive policies do not represent the best interests of the American people, certainly not the citizens of Louisiana. They will immediately result in the destruction of American jobs, higher energy costs, the loss of American energy dominance, and they will undermine our global security by reducing America's influence with nation states across the earth. The world runs on oil and gas energy. Petroleum-based products are used to pr produce virtually everything, everywhere. Those who will benefit the most from President Biden's executive orders include Russia and China. This shift in policy has been carried out in the name of conservation and environmentalism. However, as my colleague Garrett Graves pointed out with his PowerPoint, the argument that this helps our climate is absurd. Oil and gas production won't end. We'll only move overseas where it's far less regulated. Sending energy production to countries with horrible ecological records is the worst thing we can do for our climate. It's not just bad for America and Louisiana. It's bad for the world. American innovation is driving emissions reductions worldwide. As an industry-heavy state, Louisiana is a global leader in this effort, in large part because of the advent of LNG. Private companies are running cleaner operations, and that's not happening through government mandates. It's happening because innovation is good for business. The result is cleaner, more efficient fuel production. The President, in my humble opinion, should be taking action to encourage growth, to create new jobs, and to bolster America's energy security. However, the Biden administration's action not only destroy existing jobs, but also ensure that pre-pandemic production levels may never return. This is a reality we must face. President Biden seems determined to destroy America's energy dominance. If fully enacted, the radical Biden climate agenda will cost upwards of six million American jobs. This is a, a real number that's frightening. Could cost the United States economy trillions of dollars in productivity. Move this money in this business, these jobs overseas. In Congress, I'll continue to push back against this war on the oil and gas industry. I'll closely work with other members of your Louisiana de delegation. We stand strongly together. We are a small delegation. We each have unique and, and varied backgrounds, but we are extremely respectful of each other. We communicate on a daily basis I would say I'm in, in some level of, of deep communication with, with one of my colleagues from your Louisiana delegation. I cannot think of a state that has a more, more solid and unified shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder approach to serving the citizens of our state and, by extension, our nation. That includes, of course, my friend Representative Graves. We face these things head-on. My office will pursue every legally available action and support legislation that protects American workers and their livelihoods. As a state, we're faced with great challenges in the road ahead. 
Together we can overcome those challenges and push Louisiana into solid economic prosperity and a beautiful and bright future for our children and grandchildren. In these efforts, I am your ally and at your avail. Thank you again for having me here today and for allowing me to address this joint session committee. And I'm at your avail to respond to any questions. Congress, Congressman, thank you. Uh, the good news about not having a PowerPoint presentation is that you do get less questions. Uh, but you do have a question from one of your constituents, Representative De Villiers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Congressman Higgins, morning, for coming sir. in today. Good morning. I really appreciate um, you taking your time to come here and visit with us today. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing a lot from our constituents is, you know, they're struggling with the fact that they could possibly lose their job from working offshore. And they're really and truthfully looking for you and I for, I guess, answers and solutions as far as policy goes. Um, knowing what's going on in D.C. and obviously you know what's going on in Louisiana as well, do you have maybe some suggestions on what we can do policy-wide or um, maybe to address bringing jobs that are going to be lost offshore, maybe on land. And one of the things that comes to mind is we have a lot of orphan wells in the state of Louisiana. Um, and I've enjoyed working across the aisle with, with our senators on trying to find solutions to address these problems. And talking to people in the industry, um, they're telling me that some of the same equipment they use to drill for oil and gas wells, they can use to go in and plug these orphan wells and clean up these sites. So I don't know if there's just some, some ideas that you can give us. You know, we're going to be going into session in, in a couple of months, and we have time to maybe draft some legislation that would help bring our people to work and back into the state of Louisiana. And I'll thank you for any suggestions you have. Thank you again for coming today. Yes, sir, Representative. And, and the, the creative um, intellect of, of our workforce, our, our industry, champions across South Louisiana we always find a way I'm I'm friends with a, a gentleman named Lee Dragner from Morgan City he he was in the, the barge building business for the oil and gas industry and when the oil and gas industry uh, took a turn in the wrong direction he he began bidding on contracts with, with this new company called SpaceX uh, to build barges, custom barges for SpaceX endeavors. Nobody knew who SpaceX was back then. Now those guys are sending up, you know, they're, they're going into orbit every month and landing rockets. Never been done before. You're bringing it back and landing them. So now, you know, Lee Dragner's company, just to use that as an example, He's not doing any oil and gas industry work. He's got like five years of, of business lined up, all the work he can handle for specialty barges, because once the name got out there, once his reputation got out there, his orders started coming in from around the world, this specialty barge, that specialty barge, et cetera. So the, the creative intellect, I believe, collectively of our of our, our citizens uh, based upon generations of, of finding ways to make things work in the oil and gas industry. I believe that's the same fuel that will, that will feed the, the energy of thought and creativity that will help us develop jobs that currently don't exist to replace those that could be permanently lost. But, Whereas that is true, let me back up because I, I'm, not, I'm not stepping away from the fight to keep the jobs that we've got. And, and regarding President Biden, this is a gentleman that has been an elected official for 48 years. You know, he's not a radical communist man. He's, he's more cut from the cloth of, say, a, a, 
a President Bill Clinton type Democrat. He's, he's, he's a guy that I believe we can work with. Did, did I oppose his election? <laughs> Absolutely. But this is America. We're a constitutionalist representative republic. It, he's the President of the United States, the Commander in Chief. He's the executive of our nation. And we must be able to work with our, our executive just as, as, as we we work with our executives here in Baton Rouge. So I believe that if we join forces and become sort of force multipliers for each other with our offices, where you, your, your congressional delegation stands together with the, with the state legislators and address specific uh, executive actions that are injurious to Louisiana and to our economy in ways that at President Biden, it might not have been really put on his desk. You know, he might not quite get it. I believe if we join our voices together officially and present the, the, the right sort of uh, communication, either back channel or official, but together, and, and get it in front of President Biden's administration in the right way, I think he'll be responsive. You, you know, you don't make it into, you don't get reelected for 48 years by smashing everyone's interest and ignoring their reasonable pleas. So, uh, although I certainly did oppose the, uh, President Biden's election, it, that's behind us now. You know, we have to look at ways to, to, to work with, within, even though he's doing some very injurious things, and he, he's, he's, he's writing more executive orders than any president ever has historically, and many of them are certainly injurious to Louisiana. I believe we can surgically approach these things, and we increase our, our, our significance in, in his presence and, and maybe get some solid response from him to amend or adjust some of his uh, administrative agenda that would help save jobs in Louisiana right now. That combined with, with creative thoughts and process, and my office is at your avail individually, sir, all of you. Uh, we, we, I tell my, my colleague all the time, Colonel Greg Ellison, between the two of us, we make one smart guy. So we're, we're happy to sit down and work with you on specific endeavors to save jobs that currently exist and to, and to, to look at ways to create new jobs that have not existed. Thank you for that question, sir. Thank you, Representative De Villiers. Congressman, I think you hit the nail on the head. It starts with the innovation of our, of our workers and our people and, and their creativity, um, and, and we'll work with you on the public policy to support them. So thank you, Congressman. Thank you, sir. God bless.